Hi, welcome to part 6a, Resting Membrane Potential. Uh, today I'm just going to go through some basics of electricity and then talk about how ions moving across the cell membrane can affect the membrane potential uh, of a neuron. And uh, in the next part, part 6b, uh, we'll go into, into this in a, a lot more detail. So, uh, part, uh, so just, just uh, want to go through the fundamentals, uh, you know, principles of, of electricity. So uh, we have uh, like charges, for example, two positive charges will be repelled from one another uh, in the same way as two negative charges will be repelled from one another. Um, however, uh, two opposite charges will be attracted to one another. So they'll have an electrical force and move inwards. Uh, and in a, in a physics definition, we say that they have uh, the potential to do work and because of this uh, we say that they have an electrical potential which we can measure in volts. Uh, just a few extra definitions. The movement of charge is what we call current and we can represent that with, a, with an I. Uh, the opposition against this current is called the resistance which we can represent with an R and we can summarize all this in Ohm's law. Ohm's law says that the current is equal to the volts divided by the resistance. So to apply this, let's look at some examples. Uh, for example, uh, lipids. Lipids such as the plasma membrane are insulators because they have a high resistance. And if we look at Ohm's law, a high resistance means that we have less current. In the example of an ionized fluid, uh, for example, water, uh, you know, inter or if we had intracellular or extracellular fluid, which is ionized, um, we call these conductors uh, because they have a low resistance. And again, if we go back to Ohm's law, a low resistance means that we have um, uh, more opportunity for the movement of electrical charge or current. So. That's just the basics which I wanted to go over. I want to also just define here the resting membrane potential, which is, um, uh, as far as we're concerned here, electrical potential between the intra and extracellular fluid in a neuron, or it could be in any other cell, but we're just going to look at the example of a neuron. So let's go down, and I'll do a bit of a diagram here. So. Let's say we have an electrode here and an electrode here and we link them up to a voltmeter to measure the current. Um, by convention we assign the extracellular fluid at zero volts. This is the I say a cross section of an axon of a neuron um, and it's the intracellular, intracellular fluid. Um, and of course, there are you know uh, there are microtubules here, and uh, you know lots of ions and and different things floating around. Um, and uh, we we say that the the resting membrane potential uh, for a neuron is normally it normally has the amplitude of about seventy millivolts, and we say that it's negative 70 millivolts in relation to the extracellular fluid. So I'll just draw in that. So it's, it's, it's uh, negative on the inside and slightly positive on the outside. And uh, just, just so everyone, yeah, if, if you're unsure, uh, one millivolt is the same. Oops sorry, is the same as 0 0.001 volts. Um, so it's, it's only a small charge, but it is measurable and it is there. Um, and actually it's quite important because the, uh, I suppose that the resting, the resting, oh, actually I'll say, we'll, we'll, we'll just talk about sending signals. So sending signals, because that's what neurons need to do, they need to propagate 
a signal um, and to do that they need to be able to control uh, the membrane membrane potential and um, you might say okay well they need to control the membrane potential but it's already set isn't it you know like how can you change it well you, these charges are associated with ions uh, and we can move those ions in and out of the cell membrane uh, by taking uh, by taking advantage of concentration gradients and opening or closing uh, i.e. controlling um, the ion channels within the cell membrane of a neuron or any other cell. So let's um, yeah so to control we move ions cool um, and let's go through a bit of an example so uh, in this in this side in A we'll put in potassium chloride and in B we'll put in sodium chloride so they both go in um, because chloride is on both sides we'll just ignore it uh, so we have the potassium and we have the sodium and let's say that we uh, we put in an ion channel here which only allows uh, potassium to go through so potassium will go down its concentration gradient meaning because this area has a high concentration and this has a low concentration there is a flux uh, which is movement of ions uh, there is a a, a, a flux to the to the right, a movement of ions to the to the right here to to this uh, B compartment, and um, because of that, there's going to be a build up of positive charge. So you know it's it's going to keep it's going to keep going this way until it can get uh, about equal uh, concentrations on both sides, uh, if it can but we'll see in a moment that it might not get all the way there. Now uh, this uh, this uh, sodium here uh, can't get through the membrane because there's no ion channel in this theoretical example um, and so yeah we're going to get this build up of positive charge on this side and of course we've got the negative charge because don't remember uh, don't forget, sorry, that um, we've got the, the chloride ions in there as well. Uh, not that we're taking much notice, but um, they are there, so that, that becomes negative because the, the, there's more chloride uh, ions than there are potassium ions in compartment A. Uh, on the other hand, in compartment B, there are more positive ions than negative ions. So, um, so yeah, in this example, uh, we've got, we're, you know, we're, uh, by opening this channel, we've made compartment B um, more positive uh, and the compartment A more negative. Uh, we could do the same for sodium as well. It would just be the same case if we, you know, closed this and had a sodium channel, which allowed that through. And you know, let's say that doesn't exist anymore, then we'll get a build up on this side and the, the charges will be reversed. Um, what I do need to say though, and sort of make quite uh, clear, is that uh, there's this thing called um, an equilibrium, equi oh, equilibrium uh, potential. And the equilibrium uh, potential is the potential uh, which, because what's happening is, uh, just we'll go back to our example of potassium going into compartment B down its concentration gradient, um, and there's the, this isn't uh, here anymore. So this is going like that. There's the, the positive, build up a positive on compartment B side. So what happens is, is as we said at the very beginning, um, like charges 
uh, will repel and these potassium ions although going down their concentration gradient can't go you know until you know until both sides are completely equal in concentration because um, they're going to be attracted to compartment A side because it's negative so we're going to get some going back the other way and this is called an electrical potential and so when the electrical potential is equal in uh, magnitude uh, and in, uh, in its opposite in direction to the concentration gradient which is this one then we get what we call the, a net flux and uh, sorry uh, no net flux no net flux and when we get no net flux we, we call it the equilibrium potential so we'll talk about more of this in part 6b this has been part 6a resting membrane potential